Welcome to the Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. And I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, we'll be talking about uh, whether anything can be original these days. Hmm. Uh, Oftentimes, people uh, will say that nothing is original. And, you know, they look at uh, different things on TV these days, like copycats, all the zombie uh, TV shows like Walking Dead and uh, iZombie, Z Nation. There's tons of them. Ton, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they say that every story has been done, rehashed, redone uh, over and over. And um, one of the things that I remember really uh, was people complaining about how uh, the new Spider-Man movie there, the new Amazing Spider-Man, mm. uh, was out uh, five years after Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire. And uh, at least on that end, I can definitely see why people were complaining because it was so close to the uh, the other ones there. It seems like they couldn't just wait to overwrite that whole... Because as far as I know, the fans were quite upset with how the third movie, you know, turned out. So I think yeah, some of them were quite keen to just... Well, the, the, the studios, at least, were keen to overwrite that and just get to forget it or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, definitely part of it was... a. Uh, contracts out of things but <laughs> mm, definitely sometimes the contracts threaten to expire and then they have to use it but yeah hard that uh, people can be so selective with this because as you say there's many cases where they where the audience has a big problem with this but then other cases you know some stories just seem to be getting a free pass for this like um we have a new annie movie again and i think i mean there are um, the Batman movies was one of them as well, mm-hmm. where you know every decade or so you get a, a, a whole new uh, section of the Batman movies, and they're always redone from start almost. Yeah, of course, some of them do a bit better than the others. <laughs> Many movies like this. I mean, you get King Kong that was re- uh, remade a couple of years ago. You get Psycho, The Thing. Um, there's a lot of movies that you know came out. I mean, even. Even with the psycho there, doesn't isn't that a TV show now? Yeah, I think the the Bates Motel. They ended up yeah, Bates completely Motel. retooling it and making a whole TV show out of it as well. So yeah. definitely, some stories kind of people don't always mind that they get a remake. Sometimes I think the remake improves, um, especially I think biblical stories as well. Uh, this might just be the way our culture works i suppose but people love hearing tellings and retellings of the biblical stories i mean the latest one i think is uh exodus gods and kings which was a a retelling of moses and the ten plagues yeah with uh christian bale right exactly that's yeah i wanted to see that actually (laughs) yeah that's an incredibly popular story actually they've you know it seems like every couple of years I mean, they don't always, they're not always A-list titles, but you always get these, you know, it started probably with the Ten Commandments, or maybe even earlier, and mm-hmm. people just keep remaking these, and they keep retelling it, and it seems audiences don't always, they, they can't get enough of some of these stories. Do you think uh, part of it has to do with uh, time? Like, definitely with Spider-Man, even I feel that that was quite close there, five years uh, definitely was not very close because, uh, or was very close rather, because usually movies are done in two year timelines. So <laughs> there could have been one right in between there too. Yeah. It seems like they were already writing the script for The Amazing Spider Man, probably. Yeah. When the third Sam Raimi film just came out. Yeah. Which is very poss- possible. <laughs> so, like, do you think time would be a factor there with uh, the audience's um, resetting, as it were? Um, Look, it might be, but I think for some of them, like you say, it it just seems a bit improbable to expect the audience to have reset in five years' time. And and like we said, they were already busy with it uh, at that point, so they really didn't allow almost any time, which I think from the Ten Commandments to Exodus, uh, that's like... 20, 30 years easily. So that's, yeah. that's kind of, that's 
I mean, that's fine. You, know, you have to make space for evergreen stories that... But I think you can push it a bit too far, perhaps. But yeah. Yeah, with the audience, I mean, you're going to irk them at your own peril. Well, I just... Uh, I'm recalling this uh, quote here. I have a quote from uh, Jim Dermouche uh, in a Movie Magazine, or Movie Maker Magazine, number 53. And uh, he, he puts it like this. Uh, he says, nothing is original. Steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination. Devour old films, new films, music, books, paintings, photographs, poems, dreams, random conversations, architecture, bridges. It goes on and on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then he goes on to say, authenticity is invaluable. Originality is non-existent. Uh, don't bother conceiving your thievery. Celebrate it uh, if you feel like it. And uh, always remember what uh, Jean-Luc Godard said. It's not where you take things from, it's where you take them to. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a very good quote. I'm... So what do you think about the advice there with that? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh... It's it's quite a radical quote, I must say. It's uh, <laughs> saying outright steal. Um, it reminds me a bit of the one quote that I know is uh, where they say, "Good artists copy, but great artists steal." It's <laughs> yeah. also it's kind of a pretty. I think that might be one of the uh, bit of a hidden mysteries of this creative life. Is I think newbie writers might start out thinking they have to write the absolute most original, brilliant piece of art. And if they can't make it perfectly original, then it's not worth doing. And I think that might be a bit of a, a harmful opportunity. Uh, oh, pardon. <laughs> oh, a harmful opinion, sorry. Um, <laughs> because, you know, it kind of, it limits you. You, you kind of get into this rut where you think, oh, it has to be perfect, it has to be original, it has to be absolutely amazing, and that's not always how art works. I mean, we, we humans, we don't move around, we don't live in vacuums, we have all these influences. Um, I mean, who can say that they walk around each day having 100% perfectly original thoughts even about everything that they see around them? Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much most of the thoughts I think that we have are informed in one way or another by something we heard or something we saw. Um, I know that I personally tend to pick up opinions quite easily from other people. If I hear an opinion spoken out loud and I evaluate it for a moment, and if it even makes just a little bit of sense, I tend to pick it up quite easily. And then going forward, that's pretty much part of my opinion base, <laughs> um, which is a bit strange if you think about it. So what you're saying is, Ethan, you are an unoriginal person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know, why, why not? I think, uh, <laughs> I, I really think this might actually be part of the human condition. I don't, I think if, if someone convinces themselves they're exempt from this, then mm, they might need some of the little blue pills. <laughs> Well, yeah, like we're definitely influenced, uh, even from a young age, about really everything. Like, there's definitely something to be said about nature over nurture, but uh, there's no way that you can get beyond the fact that uh, if you were raised by, say, poor parents, you would have a different outlook on money as opposed to if you were raised by rich parents. It doesn't matter uh, how uh, your genetics are, really. Mm. No, definitely. I think uh, in many ways, humanity is pretty much like any other form of life. We, we live in great part to reproduce, to make copies of ourselves. And I think we are better at it than we think. <laughs> yeah. so our children tend to be very similar to us, whether we want it that way or not. Yeah. So in that way, yeah, I don't think people are all that original <laughs> in general. I think the biggest problem that I have with it, at least on a writing standpoint, uh, is when someone says that uh, nothing is original, uh, most of the time, at least on, not on uh, 
the Jim Jarmusch is in there, but on the more of the audience end, they mean it in a carte blanche. Uh, this is unoriginal. There's no merit in it anymore because of the unoriginal aspects of it. And um, there's even something recently, I'm not sure if you heard about it there, but um, John Carpenter, uh, or maybe it was the, the studio there, I'm not sure, but they uh, sued uh, this uh, the people who made the movie Lockout from 2012. Uh, because it was so similar to Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. And it was just almost kind of silly because it, it's, to me, it seems like a very, uh, very odd comparison to make. Like, definitely there's what I feel uh, would be homages to the Escape movies, but uh, it wouldn't be right to say that it's a direct comparison mm. yeah i i don't remember the escape movies that well but i saw lockout recently and yeah i from what i remember from the escape movies it's it's not that direct it's it's there's quite a difference in the feel of both of those but yeah i think as well there's a fine line i think <laughs> to be drawn between paying homage to something and outright copying it but problem with that line is i think nobody knows really where it is yeah <laughs> well it, it uh reminds me of the thought experiments uh of the ship of theseus oh yeah i think you you've probably heard of it there uh basically for those who aren't aware uh the thought experiment is uh if theseus's ship throughout his journey eventually all of the say planks of wood get replaced at what point is the ship a new ship or is it still the same hmm. so uh, people of course may not be of the same opinion i mean it is a thought experiment after all but uh, i feel that definitely it is a different ship and the only reason why people might feel otherwise is because uh, of an attachment that they might have to the original hmm. And I feel that the same thing can be applied to really anything creative. So if somebody gets attached to a particular story and uh, they really like it and really enjoy it, uh, they're going to start to see elements of that story in other stories. Hmm. And if there's enough parallels there, then it's really going to start to feel like that original story and not something new. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going to see that seem that way to them. It's going to kind of, um, but that's that's kind of on them, I think. Yeah. But you can see this. Sometimes it has um, people make assumptions because they think they know, and then it turns out to be completely wrong. Like um, there was an article in uh, the Examiner that where Robin Patterson said something about the Twilight movies that he was, you know, one of the stars in of course and he spoke about how you know all the other vampire shows like vampire diaries and true blood they were just copying uh twilight and everyone's just <laughs> trying to get on the twilight train and turns out when you look at the dates um these other stories actually predated twilight by quite a bit yeah and wasn't uh wasn't true blood like a really really old uh uh novel series I'm not entirely sure. We can check. Um, it's, I think there is one of them that was the very old series. But, I mean, never mind the fact that uh, Twilight, what it essentially is, is, is vampire romance. And yeah, you, you kind of have to wonder, can anyone think that that hasn't been done before, before Twilight or even before True Blood? I mean, yeah. <laughs> is, uh, I think Dracula vampires have always been uh, kind of romanticized. It's 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 actually a very common thing in the in the law. Yeah, and like I personally haven't seen any of those three, like Vampire Diaries or True Blood or Twilight, but I I'm sure that uh, there's not that much of a parallel between it, other than like that vampire romance side of things. Mm. I'm sure that it, they're quite different when you actually start to look at it. 
So that is quite funny that uh, Robert Pattinson uh, said that and yeah. kind of put his foot in his mouth afterwards, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I think we all do that from time to time. <laughs> Some of us are just unlucky enough that we have much bigger audiences. So, well. <laughs> so yeah, like well, I think when you take it down to those uh, basis level, definitely everything is going to look the same. But it's what you bring new to that original concept uh, is what makes it original. And to say that something is uh, unoriginal when it really isn't. Like, definitely there are going to be those copycats and they're almost exactly the same or they might be uh, just trying to um, cash in on that same style. But there are going to be ones that are uh, kind of just a tiny bit similar. And to say that those are unoriginal, it really does a disservice to the hard work that uh, people put into them. Hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. I thought recently I thought the same thing about songs. I mean, one of the new, I think the the new Adele song came on the radio, and I was you know listening to it, and it's okay. <laughs> but I found myself <laughs> thinking, you know, when will the day come when we completely run out of melodies to play? I mean, I don't know how many people necessarily know about music but you essentially have your eight notes and you know you've got the i think seven of them in the middle of those but that's not a huge number of notes that you've got and every melody has to kind of be made from those and the the various octaves that they go up and down but they're essentially the same notes so i mean when will the day come when we've kind of run out of creativity in songs when when um we just find we can no longer make any new songs because everything sounds like something else that came before it. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I think I heard uh, when I was in high school there, my music teacher even said, like, there's only so many chords that you can play on uh, different instruments. So everything in that sense has been done. Yeah. But... Uh, you want to, you of course won't get the same song because there's going to be different lyrics, different style, and different uh, mashup of those different chords, and different combinations of instruments, and yeah, there's so many, so much variation, so many things that can vary. But you would think that one day we would reach the end, but it seems today is not that day. Uh, yeah. And I think if you think about books that you know we're mainly focused on here, um, a book is quite a bit more complex I think than a than a you know a three minute song that mm-hmm. and the song reuses the same melody you know five times throughout the the song you just kind of repeat the melody where a book is can be four hundred pages of just anything it's mm-hmm. <laughs> I really think that it's there's there's a lot of space still for creativity and I think it is really encapsulated by that that one quote you had that's that's going to be my new favorite quote actually it's not where you take things from it's where you take them to that's fantastic yeah so like if somebody uh if if you're writing something and and somebody says that it's unoriginal you know definitely there might be uh some uh some meditation to go on there uh and some rethinking of the work that you're making but don't let it harm your vision because what you bring to the table is your personal experiences Mm. and um, I think we might have mentioned it in a previous podcast I I can't recall but uh, uh, it's about the uh, emotional aspect that you bring to it and uh, you will always bring something new to the table because you're kind of putting yourself on the page Exactly. I think it would be almost impossible to write an entire novel exactly the same way someone else did it. Mm -hmm. And probably that's why it's so hard to uh, even uh, copy somebody else's work, like uh, you were saying about the Wheel of Time and the last few books being written by the other author author there. Uh, There definitely might have been some of that parallel between the two authors, but it was never going to be the same because it wasn't 
that original author. Exactly. Even with the same editor, it just could not be the same, which is, this is not a bad thing. This is a fantastic thing. It's good news for everyone who wants to write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you, uh, audience, uh, why don't you let us know in the comments what you think? Do you think that uh, everything has been rehashed to death and there's nothing original anymore? Uh, or do you think that everything has its own merits? Uh, let us know in the comments and of course, uh, let us know your reasonings behind uh, that as well. Definitely. Don't just give us a yeah. Don't just give us a one sentence answer. So uh, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. See you next time. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.